Greetings, dear friends. This is Heather Elizabeth, founder of Shine, supporting humanity and navigating evolution. And I am overjoyed to wish us all a happy, happy, joy-filled, magical day out of time. And I have a dear, dear spiritual brother, Chance, with me today. And this is an extra special day for Chance because today is his galactic birthday, which is so amazing because Chance's galactic birthday has not aligned with a day out of time for 52 years. And it's not going to do that again for another 52 years. So it's really freaking awesome, special, magical that Chance is here with us today to be in these day out of time vibes. And if the understanding of day out of time is in this now moment being activated within you, we wholeheartedly welcome you because you are magnetizing your consciousness to the synergy of this amazing day for powerful, powerful reasons. And for all of our kin who are aware that today is day out of time and have been celebrating all day, thank you for creating the space to join us for this celebration, for this beautiful, beautiful day out of time. So Chance, happy galactic birthday. Welcome. Thank you, thank you. And I appreciate being on the other side of the uh, a hosting situation. <laughs> Hopefully I wasn't too much of a rascal of a guest getting all things set up. Uh, I do want to let everybody know, other than the fact that I'm super grateful for you to check out this day out of time live stream with us, uh, is that if you are listening live and you want to do me a favor and watch out for any sound of echo that might come up, I'm going to be trying to watch my uh, side and mute it when Heather's talking because I in my scramble, I didn't get the headphones that I needed to plug into this laptop, but it's been a day for me. Like the uh, the energy has been so intense, but also immediately bringing out and accept, like uh, accentuating the imbalances in my personal body and energy field. So I could have let that overcome me and been just like, ah, I'm done. <laughs> but I, I did what I could to restore the balance and to energize my chi, my life force. And I think it's worked out. I think I'm going to be getting better and better the more that we get in flow together and get in sync together because that always heals me in a powerful way to enjoy the resonance of energetically reflecting with someone like you. And you mentioned my galactic birthday, kind of a play on words there to say energetically reflect, unintentional, but the day is white magnetic mirror, which is Ken 118, I'll read the code spell because I have a whole new definition of what this means to me as of today, amazingly, because of things that occurred today and recently. My code spell is, I unify in order to reflect, attracting order. I seal the matrix of endlessness with the magnetic tone of purpose. I am guided by my own power doubled. I think that's a pretty sweet code spell to be on for the day. What do you think? Uh, freaking amazing, amazing um, energetic imprint to be holding the sacred space for this phenomenal day out of time. And again, Chance, it's it really is amazing um, to have you with us and to have you as the white magnetic mirror reflecting the invocation, the code spell for this day. And I just invite us all to allow the synergy and the vibrations of what Chance um, just shared and also Chance's vibrations because he holds this blueprint. <laughs> just allow that to, <laughs> God, yes allow it to fill you up um, because this day um, is truly phenomenal. And so for those of us who are hearing about the day out of time um, for the first time and are hearing about 
um, code spells and galactic signatures for the first time. All of this um, energy, this vibration is coming from a technology called the 13 moon dream spell law of time. And it is based upon Mayan wisdom, the ancient wisdom of the galactic Maya who brought through the intricate calendar systems, mathematics, um, astronomy, astrology, a true embodiment of our interconnectedness with the cosmos and with our galactic family. And we have been incredibly blessed to have the timelines merge and have this ancient wisdom come into this timeline to support us in embracing this ascension process that we are all in the midst of. And today, the day out of time, July 25th, every year is considered to be um, a timelessness space where we're in between years. So yesterday we finished the galactic year of the white magnetic wizard. And tomorrow we are beginning the year of the blue lunar storm. So we're really in this bridge, um, this timeless space between the past and the future. So we're fully being invited into the present moment. And this year is the 28th annual day out of time. 28 is a magical um, code in itself that our grandmother moon um, invites us into that 28 day cycle of every moon that is reflected in our galactic calendar. So the fact that this is the 28th annual um, is very synchronistic. And because of the global pause that we're in, um, all of the festivals and celebrations for day out of time that traditionally are experienced, quote unquote, in person, um, in over 90 countries across the world, by the way, celebrate day out of time. Everything is virtual um, this year, which um, I know we all have so many mixed feelings about that. Um, one aspect of how incredible this is, that it's all virtual, is that more and more people are tapping in and tuning in to the day out of time than ever before. And there are some really, um, powerful, powerful platforms like Unify, the Harmonic Convergence 2020 are celebrating the day out of time and more and more people are awakening and tuning in and tapping in to our timeless selves and this return to natural time and return to the awareness of our interdependence with all of creation and with one another. So truly magical, magical, powerful energy. And when we choose to lean into that, it really supports transmutating any of the lower fear-based frequencies that um, we have certainly been navigating um, for a very long time, but it feels like really amplified lately. Um, so thank you to all of you for choosing to tune in and align with these frequencies of the knowing that time is not money. That is an old paradigm. That is a man-made construct that has brought us um, nothing but misery. Um, the truth is time is art. Time is art. And we have the capacity to create a masterpiece with our lives as the artists that we truly are. And Chance truly is one of the most badass artists I know. And yes, 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 yes. And I, I feel guided to share how Chance and I um, connected. And then I want to invite Chance to share about his art and his path to aligning with the, his inner artist. Um, so a, a year ago, it was a year around your birthday chance, around the equinox, the uh, March equinox, our paths crossed um, through Instagram and through his amazing podcast, the Interverse podcast. And I immediately 
felt so magnetized because he is magnetic after all. I <laughs> felt very magnetized to Chance and, and what he was co-creating um, with seekers who are truly desiring to expand their consciousness. And I actually think I invited myself to be on his show. <laughs> I reached out to him and I was like, hey. It was mutual. <laughs> it was mutual. I said, hey, um, have you ever had anybody on to talk about the dream spell before? And um, he had, yet he was so gracious and um, being open for me to come on and share. And that just really um, opened up the portal for um, Chance and I, I feel like it is a reunion. I feel like I've known him um, many, many other lifetimes and realities. And I've been blessed now to be on his show two different times to share about the dream spell. Um, so all that being said, Chance, will you share with us about your path to creating um, the universe and your the art that you bring forth and your vision and this whatever is on your heart that you're called to share about um, your art. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot. I mean, today's been huge. Uh, a, a culmination of a bunch of different dots that I had getting put together to make a bigger picture, a much bigger picture. <laughs> and ironically or rhymingly, it has to do with scripture. And we'll talk about that maybe in a little while. But where, where I'm at right now is a result of following at first just what I was truly interested in, which was to have really amazing conversations with people that are my friends uh, that are so good that they're worth other people hearing. And that's how it started for me. I had no lofty goals of... <laughs> saving the world or breaking the matrix or anything. I just knew that it had really helped me to listen to people have deep conversations. And ironically, a lot of the conversations and, and channels that helped me so much to get to the point where I wanted to start a show, a lot of those channels now I wouldn't even touch with a 10 foot pole. That's how much faster it brought me towards knowing who I really was. And it's a, it's a real thing that people are attached to this identity. We're gonna talk about identity in a little while and why identity isn't really un, uh, fair under natural law. It's not actually real. <laughs> uh, but that's a whole other part of the conversation that we'll get to. But the point is, in the process of following the thing that was really exciting to me, I really quickly discovered that I had a deeper purpose for uh, drawing the conversations to myself and reflecting them outwards. At the time, I had no idea about my code spell, which as a white magnetic mirror, it couldn't be more perfect to be a podcast host that was focusing on talking to spiritual and creative people. <laughs> so I immediately knew there's something to the dream spell calendar whenever I was shown it by my good friend, Madeline Elizabeth, who synchronistically goes by Madeline Elizabeth, like you go by Heather Elizabeth. And I think for both of you, it's a middle name that you use for your platforms, but that's amazing anyway. I mean, that just shows you, again, the deep level of synchronicity that one can enter into. I like to say about the show Interverse, now that I know what it is and I kind of know what I'm doing, is that it's a show dedicated to prying open your third ear, different than your third eye. It's the thing that lets you hear your inner voice, that still, small, quiet voice. It's very, very important and left out of spiritual speakings a lot, but Pry open that third ear, which is what allows you to stay in perpetual synchronicity or to the degree that you choose to stay in synchronicity because following the inner voice is what leads you to the external synchronicity. Following the external commands is what leads you to internal death. I mean, like deadness, deafness. You can't hear the voice that you're listening to the noise that's out there. And so that's, <laughs> that's a little bit of a picture of what I learned about today or what I expanded my understanding about on today that relates to my code spell. And that's this idea of identity. But let me kick it back to you before I start to kind of break that stuff down because it's going to be maybe a little bit lengthy, but I think very valuable and uh, just a preview of the type of the way that I'm going to be presenting my approach towards truth going forward as I 
move from just this role of explorer and seeker and host into more and more of what I think is probably my destiny, which is to be more of a teacher, not a teacher as an authority, but just to be like, look, I want to give you a quicker ride through the, the neural pathway that I've carved out for myself to reach the point where I'm at. I don't want to do it for you. I just want you to catch up to where I'm at so we can both start chipping away at this wall at the same time instead of you having to take a whole different route chipping through rock to get eventually closer to where I'm at, if that makes sense. So uh, I think that <laughs> at the end of the day, it's about natural law, which is what the dream spell calendar is about. Natural law over the law of uh, man. And that's that's going to be important for humanity too come to grips with again to remember because we've known this before and it's encoded in many traditions but yeah back to you for a little bit let me hit the mute wow well chance it is really beautiful to hear your reflection and um you recognizing with your full being that you are a teacher and we're all we're all teachers, right? We're all students. And I definitely see you as um, a teacher and I have experienced that from you. And I love that part of your personal evolution right now is stepping forward into that. And it's extremely profound to me, you know, today as we've been sharing is not only day out of time, it's white magnetic mirror, which means it's your galactic birthday. And whenever we experience our galactic birthdays, which happens every nine moons on the calendar, so 260 days, and so nine moons, um, that symbolizes that human gestation cycle. It is a, a powerful um, birthing process that's happening um, within us. I actually just had mine. Um, a few days ago, Ken 114, White Planetary Wizard, is my galactic birthday. So we're just a few days apart um, in the Zulkin. And so I'm definitely feeling those, those birth energies and the cyclical um, process in my own life and what's showing up for me in this new cycle. Um, so I love that that's that um, essence of a teacher, a teacher of consciousness is what's really showing up for you and you're embracing it. And um, I feel really inspired to share too. Stephanie is here with us and she says, you know, she guided by my own power doubled people are champs, which I totally agree. And I hear you so much reflecting. Is that, that. Stephanie Eve? Yes, Stephanie Eve. Oh, dude, yeah, we're galactic Ken. She's got Red Skywalker. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, welcome Stephanie Skywalker. And um, yes, this medicine that you all hold about guided by my own power doubled, which of course is part of the medicine today, is really the way I experience it. It's like owning that you are your greatest teacher. You are the master. You are the guru. And um, we are so programmed um, to not embrace that, you know, that we do, like you said, need to look for outside sources um, for understanding of who we are. And that's just not true. And we're awakening to that and remembering that. Um, so thank you for bringing forth um, that medicine. And it feels really important. We're, we're talking about galactic signatures. And um, I know some people that are tapping in or tuning in whenever you happen to tap in and tune in. Um, you may not know your galactic signature yet. So I'm going to um, type in the chat a uh, link um, to discover, remember, be activated into your galactic signature. Right now, these energies are like so perfect for that. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. It's lawoftime.org, but I'm going to tap it in here. And your galactic signature is your what we call your galactic identity. And there's a lot of, I would say, misunderstanding about even the word galactic because there's been so much demonization about um, interplanetary culture 
and our galact galactic family. Yeah, misinformation galore. Yes, yes. Yeah, some serious yes. misinformation. Yes, yes, exactly. Um, I actually just a couple of weeks ago watched Stephen Greer's documentaries, Dr. Stephen Greer, um, and that was quite enlightening and affirming of so much of what I already um, feel and know. I, gotta be, I have to be honest, though, for myself that uh, I can't stand that guy, and I think he's a disinformation agent. Mm -hmm. I'm highly suspicious of uh, anything that tries to externalize anything and put it way outside of self. In fact, I've done recent content to try to point people to the direction that even what we think of as outer space is completely misdescribed and that the people describing it to us can be shown to be liars objectively about so many things that you have to assume uh, just to be reasonable that they're actually lying about pretty much everything that they tell us about. So when it comes to my my understanding of other of higher type of beings or more enlightened or evolved beings that want to assist us, it is on a completely different dimensional level as in dimension of scale, like dimensions of a human to ant. There's things that are like we're like ants to them. And because they're spirit, they have positive and negative expressions as well. And uh, we can tune in and align with their movements in a way that synchronizes us and po positively and they're interested in us in some cases others aren't interested in us at all but it, essentially the further away uh, it's like a higher octave of who of you that's like the real thing to understand so the farther away that you get from looking at the the universe as self but in an integrated and healthy holistic way not in a ego identity way um you, you need to look at the universe as self as at all itself that like, that's the highest maximum but if you're trying to like really push this other part of consciousness way out there and say that like they're they're far away space aliens light years away and all that it's actually getting really far away from self in a in a sense and i think uh really a lot of that material is distraction from other types of stuff that you could be researching a lot of it i feel is is relatively harmless, but whenever we get a savior motif about any type of aliens or uh, their evil reptilians come to destroy us, uh, antagonistic othering of any kind of aliens, just realize it's a repeat of the exact same thing that's been played on people in religions, which are the destruction of true spirituality and true nature. Um, <laughs> maybe this is time to just get into it a little bit. Uh, what I realized today about my code spell, and hopefully that'll make my point of where I'm coming from a little easier to swallow for anyone that really likes the idea of other civilizations out there aliens because i'm not saying that in an infinite universe that type of thing couldn't exist i'm saying that there's no external saviors and no external others um all itself so anything that's another species or civilization is actually just like another branch on the tree of life that we're all leaves on we're a leaf alive it's very similar uh, phonetically, and there's a connection there etymologically as well. We're leaves on a greater tree. But this idea, and the very, let me read the whole code spell again. I unify in order to reflect, attracting order, I seal the matrix of endlessness with the magnetic tone of purpose. I'm guided by my own power doubled. So I want to zero in on the sealing the matrix of endlessness because I, that is what has come to my, I've gained wisdom on this recently and today. And what is the endlessness is um, the rat race, being trapped, moving in a circle, uh, being on a, a loop, if you will. And that's where humanity has been for quite a while. Uh, we're leaving, or we have left actually, if my information is correct, we have left uh, the age of Pisces quite a long time ago, like 300 years ago. And all the technological changes and societal changes we've seen since the United States were born was born is related to this age of Aquarius. And the age we came out of before, which was Pisces, is the depth of the ocean, the deepest part of the unconscious ruling over the world is that age. And it's not evil. It's just part of the cycle that we go through. But while we're in that age, we get the deluge, which is what the story of the flood is actually trying to tell us about. The deluge is delusion, and 
with things like the the Vatican and the the way the church has controlled the the Western world and other churches, even Buddhism has done the same type of thing as Catholicism and in the East, uh, in a lot of senses. I'm not saying there aren't gems in those spiritual paths. I'm not trying to turn you off your spiritual path, but I am trying to give you a different way of looking at it. That's for sure. Uh, the the deluge of delusion, the age of Pisces, the deep part of the ocean. Uh, most people, even though it's been several hundred years since we've switched ages, the world is still wet. It's still overly damp in this sense. There's actually, uh, it's actually over feminized, even though externally it looks like it's over masculinized or there's a patriarchy ruling everything. But in fact, it's ruled by the moon. Uh, the, the water and the moon is, is the ruler of this unconscious or it's related to the unconscious, the, the dream or the sleepwalking or the matrix. So most people's heads are still underwater uh, from this deluge of the previous age. And you see, I'm wearing this Aries hat right here. There's a, there's a purpose for all the different signs. And uh, I like, obviously I like the dream spell, but I also like Western astrology because it is, also based in natural law and has a lot of relevance and the systems work together synergistically. But right now we're in a point where we need the spiritual fire of truth represented by Aries. I have the ram on this wand, although you can't see this is jade um, carved onto the handle here. And that spiritual fire of truth coming from the most high or the heat of the sun, the heat of the masculine force, the divine masculine, the part of the yin yang that says no, to that which is not necessary or evil or no longer serves. Those are the things most needed to tap into right now in the coming uh, age of Aquarius as we go further into it to, dr to metaphorically speaking, dry out the water of the deluge and get people out of delusion because that's where people are right now. They're in delusion. Now, what are they in delusion about? They're in delusion about their identity, their id entity. It's an it entity. It's something that's an it. It's artificial. It's not who they really are because you're not an it. You're a living soul. You're a man or a woman. You're not a person. You're not a persona. And whenever spiritual traditions talk about killing the ego, they're not talking about killing your natural uh, self, the, the, the individual human uh, spirit that you are in this incarnation, that uniqueness. People associate that uniqueness because of the deluge and the uh, the false ass New Age teachings. Excuse me, <laughs> that tell you kill your ego. All, everything is one. We're all just one. Well, that's like actually secret communism programming. And the, <laughs> there's a reason why there's a reason why people are attracted to that. It has to do with wanting to give up their own personal responsibility. But the key is. It, there's a difference between your identity, your id entity, and your natural spiritual soul, your your actual true highest self. So the reason why I like the dream spell so much is because it is based in natural law. Um, we're going to talk about how it compares to the fictional calendar and the fictional uh, identity that people live under right now. But where that identity actually comes from is when people are first born. This is the matrix of endlessness that I'm, that I'm getting into right now. Humanity's been in this matrix for a very long time where they're born and symbolically in some way, shape or form, the state, the corporation, nation of the, in which they are born uh, because their parents had a certain status in that corporation, that corporate structure, uh, that governmental structure. When they're born, they are given that status, too, before they even get a chance to say anything about it. Not to mention the other stuff they do, like uh, circumcision, which that's the most insane thing you could ever imagine if you were just thinking about it rationally. But the child is born. Their foot is stamped. The soul of their foot, the soul, is stamped on a piece of paper that's the birth certificate, certificate of live birth. They're being delivered, delivered. In many Eastern practice or traditions of health, it was actually thought that consciousness came from the liver as much as it came from other parts of the body. The liver is the detoxifier. It's the thing that says no to stuff in your body and kicks it out. It's actually really strongly related to the spiritual divine masculine, the part of ourselves that says no to evil and says no to that which we don't need or shouldn't have because it's against nature in that it hurts us or hurts others. So you're delivered. The other definition of delivered is abandonment. 
you're delivered by your mother and she doesn't know she's abandoning you. She doesn't realize that that's what it means to be delivering you. But in legal terms, which is something I will explain in a second, what the, why legal terms matter, uh, the person is being delivered and abandoned as cargo or property with the certificate of live birth because birth is where a vessel uh, it dis disembarks its cargo in a birth. And it sounds crazy to people that are really new to this, but we have to realize that the name that we're given at that point and the numbers that are associated with us, that is the digital identity in the matrix. When Neo goes into the matrix again for the first time after leaving it, he sees he's in the white room and he sees himself as he looked when he was in the matrix, even though in the real world, he doesn't look that way anymore. And that's the digital representation of his psychic self. Well, and it's, it's an artificial self in a sense. It's a construct. And that's exactly what the character that you are assigned at birth after you are delivered by the docked or the dock <laughs> docking the, with the or uh, because you're the cargo in this situation. Uh, you <laughs> this this false identity is they call it the straw man because it's a man of no substance. It's in legal terms. It's a real thing. Um, straw man is homo or something like that. Uh, I, I might have had the latter wrong there, but the point is, this is the false construct, the false self. It's not the ego that is the thing that needs to be killed. It's actually this thing, because under the legal system, which essentially works by ha copywriting an entirely different language that phonetically sounds exactly like the language that all of us regular people speak, copywriting it, and, and that's the legal terms, the legal language, and that's owned by the government. So whenever you're in court or something, whatever you're saying to try to represent yourself actually has, in a lot of senses, completely opposite meanings of what you think it is you're saying. That's why you can't win in court, because you're, you're literally incompetent and they will rule as such. And you are an employee of the, the Corporation of the United States of America as long as you're claiming that false id entity in the, the birth certificate and the Social Security card, the driver's license. And this is uh, how priests have manufactured the consent of the masses into their own enslavement or own, being owned by the ruling classes. Uh, priestcraft has been doing this since all the way back to like ancient Greece or before. I mean, who knows exactly how much history is really correct, but this is why it's the matrix of endlessness because it's this is Maya. This is the actual illusion. And so your first name is considered your natural name, your Christian name, your God-given name, whatever. But the last name is the surname and that has to, that's where the state kind of comes in and has this deep this title of ownership because they own your title like a car title this is your title and if you look at your documents from the government your name is in all capital letters because that's actually the corporation that is phonetically the same sounding words as the name that you go by in daily life so uh the, when we talk about needing to kill the ego this is the actual thing that needs to be killed and in a, it's fictional, so it won't kill you to kill it, but by the only way out of the agreements that have been um, forced on you by being born into this system is actually a death certificate. You have, in law, you have to exit a matrix, which is a system, in, literally in a, a legal sense, the, the word matrix refers to like a, a, a binding agreement or set of contracts, and you have to exit it the way you came in, so you need a death certificate. doesn't mean you have to die. Now, where we're at right now is at a point where humanity is ready to learn this in mass and step away from the need to uh, represent this fake self. And why this is so important is because whenever we live in this uh, legal system created by man, <laughs> what is legal in the sense of what's created by man is actually the opposite of natural law or God's law. When I talk about God, I don't mean a character. Or, or a religious sense, I mean the, the totality of all that is, nature, the truth of what actually exists right now. That's what God is. And there is law that is self-evident through nature, which is love nature or love God, love existence, and love your brothers and sisters, love the other people, and love yourself, of course. All those are self-evident. And actually, if you know those laws and follow those laws and you're able to perceive them because they're self-evident because you're not in a state of delusion where your head's underwater and you can't breathe or see 
then you need no laws of mankind to govern you whatsoever. Government is mind control. Ubinare, govern, is actually to control, and mint is mind, mental. Mint also is related to the moon, uh, but that's another conversation that we don't necessarily need to go into. But what I've realized about how to seal the matrix of endlessness is literally to complete the contract. I learned this today, that the way out is if we actually are able to receive a death certificate for our fake corporate person and then move on with our life outside of the fake ass legal system. And what's what's really interesting about this legal system is because uh, uh, the sorcerers who created it and created the language that we all are using know that there is such a thing as karma in natural law that you will receive what you do to others, essentially. That's why the system is set up for us to uh, always have to give our consent for everything that hurts us. Oh, you died from smoking cigarettes? Well, you didn't have to buy those cigarettes. Oh, you got in a car accident? Well, you didn't have to drive that car. Oh, you got killed in a war? Well, you didn't have to sign up for the war. I mean, there's been times where coercion has been more forced, but there's always been uh, karmic blowback for the society when that's happened. Think like drafts in Vietnam, <laughs> if you want to uh, have a good example for that. And th really, like I said, this this priestcraft has been going on for millennia and millennia, and that's why it's the matrix of endlessness. And it's time for humanity to actually wake up and get out of that because uh, living strictly at, under natural law, if we could achieve that, I mean, I have, I'm not achieving it, obviously. I still have a driver's license and everything. But once, once we know this, the next step is that we all just move towards building something different and removing ourselves from the fiction because a fiction is artificial. And now to talk about the... The dream spell, what's interesting about the dream spell is it is also fiction because it's created by men. It's not something that's self-evident in nature that you would know all these different code spells and what day was what. But this fiction was derived by observing nature. And so in a, it is uh, based off of nature in a sense. I mean, in a, honestly, that's why the, the fake legal system it can hold itself up too is because at the base it's actually based on the Bible, which is not a story of a literal man, but is a story of allegory for natural law, which is based on observing of nature. So uh, that's why if we are outside of the system and we didn't identify as a straw man, we would have rights as a sovereign being, as a, a totally free person and the uh, legalities could not touch us. But the big important thing to realize about what we're moving into the shift is that we're no longer going to be insured. Sorry, <laughs> no more insurance. You're going to have to just trust God. You're just going to have to trust the universe. You're going to have to trust synchronicity. Uh, too bad. Sorry, no more insurance. And that means even that we won't have insurance that someone in a uniform won't try to hurt us. And that's we have to have radical responsibility for ourselves if we're not going to have insurance. And you can't be insured unless you're part of this fiction because in nature there's no insurance anything you a gazelle could get jacked anytime by a lion they have to be watching out and that's where we need to move to we've become so lazy about our personal responsibility that we want to have someone else ensure our safety for us and to do that we have to continually sacrifice all of our freedoms for safe for the illusion of security uh, but actually the further we go down this path the more chaos there will be it will not be less chaos and the chaos will just play into the master's hands who want to keep people so afraid that they beg for so they beg for something to be their master so that they can feel safe. But it's the jig is up. It's over. Uh, humanity, enough of humanity knows this. And I'm never going to not talk about this. And I'm, I'm going to move towards being sovereign. I'm going to eventually assassinate the straw man in some way and live without needing it at all. But I'm not in a hurry to do it because now that I know the truth and never I can stand in it and speak the truth, uh, every time that I do that with truth as I discover it and deeper levels are eventually revealed to me if I continually speak it and share it and synchronicity flows like complete and total magic the more I keep myself aligned and healthy. So I know that there is a, a divine synchronicity that will protect us and it's not insurance, it's just knowing. And knowing that the wrong thing isn't going to happen to you, even if it's something that you felt like you weren't ready for or that is too hard for you. Uh, fear is the real illusion. Fear is the imagination killer. So anyway, to go back to the the, uh, the dream spell before I kick it over to you, it is a fiction, just like the fictionality of the legal system. But it is, uh, it's not a fiction that's trying to 
disconnect you from nature or synchronicity or God. It is a fiction, just like the Bible or the Lord of the Rings. These are fictions that allegorize the truth in nature, the, the truth of God, the truth of who we are and what we're capable of and what we're up against in authenticity against pure artificiality, good versus evil at its core. That's what it is. Uh, so I think this is a fiction worth being invested in. I think that whenever we realize that we're living in a fiction with these identities, uh, these straw man corporate people, I mean, corporation means a corpse. It's a co it starts with the same um, phonetics. When you get a mortgage that's 30 years of debt, debt is death. It's the death half of the wave. You discharge debt to acquire um, titles to property. You don't even get to own the property in the system we have right now. The government owns everything and you get the title to be in entitled to the benefits of that property but the responsibility to keep it up uh there's there's so much that's backwards about the legal fiction so when i talk about it i don't mean to throw away everything that comes out of the imagination or completely discard all forms of fiction but just to know when we're looking at fiction and when we're looking at nature know the difference and not take fiction to be the reality because that's where all of this is coming from in terms of the imbalances and the, the massive dis-ease in the world and the, the way technology is causing us problems through uh, making our lives easier in ways that actually we'd be better off if we were having to manage ourselves. I mean, there's our potential is limitless. So um, the, the more that we believe in this limited definition of who we are, the further we are away from truth and nature. I mean, ambiguity is nature. When you see a deer or you see an eagle, you don't know his damn name. It's just an eagle. And we are different. We name things. We, it's okay if we have a first name and can I, and uh, easily distinguish one another through that and have society and culture. That's great. I mean, that's what makes us special is that we are the image of the creator and our imagination is our connection to source. And that through that, we're able to build and uh, exalt nature. This is what alchemy is all about. It's about recognizing the processes in nature. And instead of trying to pervert those processes or rape them and take something out that you need from it, like um, pharma pharmacology does. In alchemy, you take the actual process itself, you honor the process by mimicking it, and then through your own uh, joy in the process, through the magic of synchronicity of, of knowing that the creator is through acting through you, there's, a, a very, there's various ways this occurs, but you exalt the process and you make that natural process just a little bit better by being a part of it. And humans do that with, with the right kind of agriculture and permaculture and creating food for us and using what's already there in a harmonious way to enhance things for everybody. So that's what technology should be about. And that's what our future should be about. And that's what our imaginations are there for, not to be hijacked and colonized in the mind, which is the most valuable real estate in the world right now because all the physical property is owned. The, the real estate in your mind is the most valuable thing in the in your personal universe and in your universe. So uh, the first step towards getting ourselves free of the actual false self persona is to decolonize the imagination. However, you need to do that, whether it's through practices that bring stillness to your mind, like meditation or practices that uh, practices that open up your connection to imagination, art and painting and things. There's a lot of positive stuff out of art. But we have to realize where we're also enslaved by the terms of art, the terms and conditions, the definitions of words that actually mean something opposite in a, a legal sense to what we think that we're saying. <laughs> uh, last thing I'll say before I kick it to you, where do you get your definitions from? You get it from the diction of Aries, the most high, the highest part of the brain. That's where the, the diction of Aries is also the diction of Aries, the god of war. So do, do your, does your understanding of what you say, who you are, and how you express yourself in the world, how you interface with this matrix of language, is that coming from the Aries, the god of war, or Aries, the most high, the uh, top of the brain, the optic thalamus, the connection to, to source and spirit within yourself, the third eye? That's where I, where I not only am I an Aries sun sign, but I also like to put this symbol right here because it, it has a lot of significance beyond just my sun sign. And and anyway, that's where we're at right now, everybody. Are you, are you ready? <laughs> oh.
Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> I told you I figured out some stuff about this code spell. Yeah, the endlessness. We're breaking it. Yes. We're breaking out into the true endlessness. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. So the mirror that chance is has um, reflected an abundance of um, awarenesses that um, perhaps many of us are just now receiving. Um, in this sacred space, receiving these awarenesses. And um, it's so evident, chance, and because you holding the, the white magnetic mirror, it's obviously present today that the Skywalker um, expanding your consciousness medicine is very present as well. I'll and tell you about the Skywalker after you're done. Just allowing... <laughs> um, just allowing ourselves to be curious. My that's like one of my favorite um, ways of navigating this realm is being in a space of curiosity and knowing that we attract into our space um, exactly what we're supposed to receive in that now moment um, for our evolution. So just being curious about all of it and knowing that we are in um, a profound, profound, profound um, time of transition in every um, sense of the word and uncovering of so much that has been hidden for so long. Um, and I also feel like we are very much opening the space <laughs> of the the new year of the blue lunar storm. <laughs> the storm is here. Um, and recognizing that the storm, while um, we can perceive it to be destructive, um, and that isn't comfortable to our aspects of our human selves, um, it is a destruction that's clearing the pathway for our enlightenment and our um, potential to embody our true selves with a capital S. So, um, Chance, how would you feel about sharing some of the uh, tuning fork medicine with all of us so we can vibrationally um, integrate and process everything that's coming through the channels right now? Okay, for sure. And I saw in the chat that our, our Red Skywalker, Stephanie, uh, was saying that identity also means uh, sameness. And that's very true. Whenever you claim an identity, you're claiming sameness to a thing. And this is so important. Our, our indigenous ancestors had a very strong knowledge about why you wouldn't want to claim an identity. And in fact, other than for things in nature, they generally didn't have nouns for most stuff. So you would call your brother, you call him kicking a horse or dancing with wolves or whatever, but you're describing a process that is happening. And even actually the original meaning of the word Jehovah is not like the noun of the God. It's more like the Tao. It's actually a process, it's a verb. Jehovah is literally a verb. So are you a noun, which is uh, an identified sameness, or are you an, a process of becoming and being? Really, this is a very important distinction between the false self and the true self. And if you are claiming an identity or sameness to something in a permanent static sense, you are identifying with death because death is the only stasis that there is. And even that's illusory because even in the stasis of something, it eventually breaks down and stops being static. I mean, you can't stop nature. It's just you believe that you're stuck, but actually you're just uh, it, it's uh, involution instead of evolution. So we get to decide that for ourselves, which path we want to take and whether we want to be on the path of evolution or involution. <laughs> but man, we're there. I mean, some there's always going to be people that enjoy fiction more than reality and they're not ready to come out. But I mean, I say that I don't want to program that into the future that like that's a guarantee. But uh, uh, even still, I think even in an enlightened society, people are going to still have to constantly 
hold on and retain to this knowledge. And that's why it's encoded in stuff like the Bible, because even when humanity largely gets it and knows not to subscribe to fictions or be enslaved by priestcraft, there's still the possibility that a new generation could get jacked. And uh, just within one or two generations, they forgot everything that was before. And they've got uh, this new mental software loaded on them that creates this illusory identity matrix. So uh, that's, I mean, really, that's what the movie The Matrix was um, technically about. And in the original script of it, people in the original story knew they were in The Matrix and decided to go in. So think about that one. They changed that. They made it. They took away the part in the story that it was you had consent over it, although they did bring it back in the end after the third movie where uh, they defeat Agent Smith, which is all about replicating himself and creating copies of himself and it's the perfect allegory for what fear does, which try to control everything down to a single outcome, as opposed to what love does, which is allow for infinite possibilities and nurture and expand those possibilities. Uh, people are basically just reasserted into the matrix after Neo breaks the, or saves the matrix and, and destroys Agent Smith. And weirdly enough, they're bringing, they're bringing the cast back and doing a matrix for two years. I just found out, which is very, very interesting. Um, so we'll see how that goes. But the point is, everything about the, the fictional system is built on your consent. So going forward, whatever you look into, whatever you research, looking at vaccines being harmful, looking at how the, the New World Order is taking over and we, our freedoms are gone. Just realize you already, your freedoms as far as being granted by this system, by this corporation, they've been gone a long time. Your actual divine rights as a living soul, you can never give those up, no matter how much you believe in a fiction. So the point that, that I want to make is like, don't be scared of anything that's being done, because if you're moving towards your own sovereignty and and deleting your dependence on this straw man identity and government thing, then uh, and and not consenting to it, well, the only way that they're going to come after you is against natural law because you're not consenting, and which means you're going to win. You're going to win, even if even if you have to leave this body, which is very, very unlikely that that would ever happen, only by your own choice in a higher level, believe it or not, because you are a pure sovereign being. You are the image of the creator. So there's literally nothing to fear, but there's fictionally everything is enslaved. You're enslaved completely fictionally. <laughs> you're, you're not really enslaved. But if you keep pretending that you're this fiction, then you're enslaved because fictionally you're enslaved. So keep that in mind as all this stuff unfolds in 2020 gets weirder and weirder because it will. Because the more belief in the fiction people have, the harder they believe it, the more they're going to wear the masks and the gloves and the persona will cover their entire body to the point where you don't even know the natural living soul behind whatever masks they're wearing. And like that, I mean, there's a reason why. The mask is happening synchronistically around the world. It is, uh, it is a symbolic ritual to demonstrate that you believe in this persona. A persona is a mask that, by definition, so uh, keep that in mind. You're not a person. You are a living soul. You're a man or a woman, but you are not a person. So I guess that's kind of what I want to leave us with before we start getting into the tones. Um, we're going to do some tuning forks, hopefully. The sound comes through. I've never really tried to do this on a live stream, and this might not be the best mic setup, but I'm going to work my way through eight chakras. We're going to start at the root and go all the way to the next octave up uh, beyond your body and connect those as best we can. And I'll go through it uh, fairly quickly. Uh, you can just listen in and know that the tones are influencing your biofield because we are all one biorhythm. We are all one vibration unified by the mind of source and the imagination of God, the all that is, we are all expressions of, we're all properties of. We are not property of government, we are properties of nature, as in not owned by, but expressions of. Like you can say that water has the property of wetness. You, God has the property of Heather. God has the property of Stephanie. You are the, a property of nature. So that's what, <laughs> that means that at any part of nature that is existing. And these tones are definitely natural tones we're going to be using. They're tuned into the solar harmonic spectrum, which is direct frequency match for your chakras. Know that the, these tones are in your biofield. And if you know that, you can integrate 
this and allow it to strengthen the different energy centers that you are and uh, hopefully go forward with a little bit of like a nice <laughs> microdosy psychedelic vibe uh, tapping into this flow state like I'm feeling right now because what's really wonderful about today is all day if I wanted to I could have been afraid of like how the allergies I was experiencing over there and like the heavy duty vibes and energy I was getting through was gonna uh, knock me off course and not be able to do this by the time I got here just in time everything got better what do you know I knew it would <laughs> <laughs> but also this energy that we're connecting into all together right now, and even for those of you that are listening to this not live, that is healing. That is, I mean, truth is what heals us. Uh, right, correct knowledge, right knowledge, applied properly as wisdom is the only real source of good uh, that mankind can achieve. I mean, it only, only works because the knowledge that you're gaining is of nature, which is what already is. And as sovereigns, as kings, you're always as king, as king, as queen, you're asking, as queen, <laughs> the questions. You're ask, you're interrogating nature, but not like not in a negative sense, but you are investigating nature. And this game of high, cosmic hide and seek where the creator reveals the processes by which you exist to you one at a time as you ask the question, and you reveal that answer, two more questions or more than that are, are opened up after that. This is your real free will you can go you can ask the next question of a or b um you can choose good or evil every step of the way you can choose evolution or involution and that is where your free will is not in the illusion of freedom of having grants rights granted to you by a fictional system a fictional document a constitution whatever you want to call it none of those rights are, are granted to you through that system many ways all charade I could I could prove that out with uh, the law, actually, as I've uh, come to understand it. But the, the real charade is that you can't have any of your rights ever taken away from you. They're unalienable, as in you can't people pronounce that unalienable, but it's actually unalienable, as in there can be no lien placed against the rights that you inherently possess from nature. And man, once you re realize that you're going to have to dis demolish some other serious belief systems, a lot of BS, including the entire notion of government, because, uh, <laughs> I mean, we we don't need that. Uh, we don't need mind control. We don't need sameness and identity. We just need, uh, you know, the natural self-evident charitable behavior and, and general goodness that humanity is on the inside. But okay, I could go on and on, and I better start doing some fork tune-ups. Just know that these these tones are tuned to your chakras, and I'm going to guide you with some affirmations that you can repeat to yourself or just accept into yourself. Because as I sweep these uh, frequencies through your biofield, it's going to move if you are open to it, if your mind is open to it. It's going to move stuck energy from different parts off balance to the left or right of your biofield back into the column, the core, the center column, which is where the chakras are. So any emotional hangups or trauma or even injury and pain that's chronic and repeats in different manifestations is all a symptom of your energetic template being off balance somewhere. And what chakra is off balance from and what side is off balance to determines the general nature of what that feeling is that's stuck. And what we do with our minds, because our minds are powerful and our thoughts are forms, is when there's something about ourselves we do not want to feel or integrate or be aware of or know, we push it off to the left or right, depending on where uh, where it goes, if that makes sense. And then we use our thought forms to put a wall and a barrier around that energy, which holds it there permanently. But that also takes away a lot of your personal energy because A, you have a lot of your subconscious mind holding all these tension spots that is reflected in tension spots in your actual physical body because this energetic blueprint is what your body grows out of. It's the energetic scaffolding that informs everything about your holographic body. Uh, so you'll have less throughput for anything that you're trying to achieve because some of that juice is out there. So we're going to sweep through the biofield with these tuning fork tones and bring as we as we cross over these parts where there's stickiness and where there's this uh, mental construct that's holding the energy out there it's going to be brought swept back to the core absorbed back into where it came from which is the appropriate chakra and, and once it's there you get to decide 
what you're going to do with that new energy. Are you going to go back to old belief system, which just configures it back exactly the way it was, and this will have achieved pretty much nothing? Or will you truly accept the truth of the new replacement knowledge that I'm going to put in place to seal the matrix of endlessness with your own power doubled <laughs> to get back to the code spell. Man, this is going to be cool. Uh, I'm just looking at my code spell one more time because it really gets me fired up. I mean, it talks about the magnetic tone of purpose. This is my purpose. I mean, I'm going to reflect this as a form of unification of your own biofield and my own biofield, which are the same energetic field, uh, the same soup. We just have different perspectives on it. And yeah, this is this. These tones are definitely a big part of my purpose that I only recently discovered. Um, it's Tony Forks are, are amazing, and there's there's so much more I could say about how how they really work. But I wanted to give that primer before we start, so that you can, if you want, be a participant in this process. And I mean, whether you want to like relax and close your eyes, or just listen to it and know that these tones are in your biofield, whatever is going to work, you can listen to it again later. Um, and I'm going to try to do this in a way that is efficient and quick, and hopefully everyone's going to be able to hear it. So let's start um, with the, the C. C is 256 hertz. This is the root chakra. It's also, we're going to start by playing the tone a few times, and then I'll explain what we're moving. And if it's really bad, like too loud, tell me and I'll move back. So I'm entering, I'm entering the uh, the biofield around the region of the feet. We're going to be sweeping from the right to the left. The feet are a really important thing. They ground us to connect us to the earth. Oh, I'm sorry. I did not mean to bang it that hard. Hopefully that wasn't horrible. <laughs> It really needed. See, these I'm still new at these works, but they decide whenever the tone needs to be a certain strength as they're moving through different parts of the field. And sometimes there's something big to break up there. Uh, we're going to move up towards the knees and be sweeping. Well, oh, there's a lot there, guys. Uh, that has a lot to do with our feelings of uh, guilt for not doing enough and also our what we feel as our inner and outer obstacles, especially on the right knee here, our inner obstacles to moving forward. We're going to clear those out tonally. Now we're moving up closer to just under the hips, the upper thighs. This is uh, where we're going to be. sweeping up any feelings of uh, not being safe in our space. And hopefully we know from what we've already talked about here today, that whenever we stand in truth, we're safe in every space and we need no external feelings of comfort or protection. We enter into the perpetual flow of synchronicity, the nature and the will of the creator. Okay, sorry if that's too loud again. We've got... Now, a lot of the energy from our root chakra being swept back and returned to where it belongs. And so if you want to imagine a strong red fire and try to, re try to feel with your conscious awareness that space just below your tailbone, feel the almost tail-like energetic cord connecting you to the earth, the earth star, the earth's own root chakra, but we're always connected to a chakra that we share. And now we're going to say to ourselves, it is safe for me to move forward in life. And now we're going to move on to the next one. Moving up to our sacral chakra, 
288 hertz, the note is D. I'm entering the right side of your biofield right now. We're going to consciously let go of any anger or resentment that we hold towards first our father, and then towards all the men in our lives that either in some way we felt like they let us down or they threatened us. We're going to relax that resentment, bring it back in towards the core, and feel it. Try to activate the sense of feeling of the sacral area the lowest part, close to where your baby making parts are. <laughs> Try to stimulate some feeling there and uh, the attention of having the feeling of energy there is the reintegration of the stuck energy that we just swept out. Now we're gonna do the same thing along the left side. Now on this left side, we're going to let go of the feelings of having either been let down by our mother or letting down others or being let down by others that are feminine presence in our life. Feeling unnurtured or unsupported. We realize that through this energy center of the sacral, we are our own support. We are our own creative energy. We need no external, not even the parent, although some of us are blessed to have assistance from our parents. We are our own source. Now we're going to seal this chakra by telling ourselves, I have the power to create the life I want. I have the power to create the life that I want. <sighs> it feels good to know that. And we know it, we don't believe it. Belief is the enemy of knowing. Now we're going to move up to our solar plexus. Actually, I'm going to give us a connecting tone between the root and the sacral because these are so connected, guys. So as I play this tone, we will be affirming that it is safe to create what we want, not just that we have the power, but that it's safe. Okay, solar plexus, the yellow, the third, the lower part of the chest. Entering the right side of the biofield. Sweeping up all the times in the past where we felt powerless or that we didn't have the will to let go of things that no longer serve us. And we tell ourselves, I have the will to say no and to let go.
and to know when to do so. <laughs> now we're going to enter the left side of the biofield here. We're sweeping up all the feelings of being worried about not being able to change things in our external world. Realizing that change comes from within. And we don't need to try to control the external world or the future. As we return this energy to the core, we will say to ourselves, I create that which I believe. I believe that which I know. Now we're going to link, we're going to link the solar plexus with the sacral. And we will affirm to ourselves that I have the will to create my reality. Not as a controller, but through the perceptions that I hold onto and the health of my worldview, this is what I can control. This is what I create. Now the heart chakra, the earth chakra, the balance between the lower and the upper. As we sweep through the right side of the biofield, We're looking to collect the energy from all the times we didn't love ourselves, but didn't want to think about how much we didn't love ourselves, rejecting the realization that we're not loving ourselves. As we bring this back into our core, we seal with the affirmation, I love myself unconditionally. We're moving into the left side of the heart chakra's biofield now. Coming to terms with, on an energetic level, the fact that we haven't always been loving to others. We don't need to remember the times that we weren't. We don't need to beat ourselves up or judge ourselves. We just recognize that in the past, we were not kind to others and we ignored the fact that we knew we were unkind and unloving. All the feelings of self-judgment that we pushed aside so that we could just continue to function. We're going to collect all these now. 
bring them back into the core. And from here, we're going to seal the heart chakra with the affirmation, I love everyone unconditionally. I love everyone unconditionally. Not the world, not the fiction, but the one, everyone the one within all. Wow, there's a lot of strength within this too right now. This is the heart and the solar plexus connecting right now. will say that I love my own responsibility. I love taking responsibility for my own energy. Uh, I was missing a fork. I'm sorry for the delay there, everybody. Okay, the bottleneck feeling is going to pass aside as we move up into the throat chakra. We're gonna sweep up all the feelings where we ever were too afraid to speak our mind. We're gonna seal it with the affirmation that I speak whenever I feel like speaking. <laughs> That's not a great affirmation. I am happy when I express myself. I'm not afraid to express myself. I love to express myself. Now we're gonna enter the left part of the, the biofield of the throat, the blue light throat chakra. And all the times that we felt sad because we thought that we weren't listened to or heard, and we pushed that down because we didn't want anyone to see that we thought we were weak, that we thought that we didn't have anything worth saying, that's why no one listened. Sweeping up all those times where we felt like we weren't heard. Bringing that energy back. Letting go of the belief that we can't be heard, that our voice doesn't matter. We seal this affirmation as, when I speak, I am heard. My voice is powerful. Now the heart and the throat chakra together contain the wisdom of loving to express ourselves. And I'm also going to link the throat chakra with the root chakra because what you put into your mouth 
goes down to your gut. And the way that your gut feels determines what comes out of your mouth. We must recognize that the above and below are reflections of each other, that the chakras are not separate in any way, that they, they don't just flow upwards in a column, but they are fractally interconnected all to each other as well. So we'll play the C and the G together. These are my favorite two to link because it makes my initials CG, <laughs> throat and root. Very, very important in physical bodies to understand the connection between these two. We're going to seal this with the affirmation that I eat healthy because it feels good. We're also going to say another one. I speak well because I feel well. The flow goes both ways. Coming up to the third eye. The A tone. As we sweep through the right side of the field, we're going to let go of all the things in the past that we're holding on to. Any memories that are stuck in our energy, we don't need to consciously remember them. Although if that comes later, we should allow it, witness it, and accept it. Not pushing away the thoughts, not pushing away the feelings, but finding the way that the feelings show up in our body and putting our attention there so that those feelings can express and reintegrate. So everything that we might believe we regret about the past, it's now a great time to realize that everything that's ever happened got you to this point and you're the best you've ever been. So it's technically the best day of your life. So we'll seal this side of the third eye with affirmation that we get a better strike here. I'm not chained to the past. The past is my power. Now we're going to go into the left side of the third eye field. This is a more sensitive area right now for all of us because, like I said, the future has got no insurance. Even if you believe in a fiction that you've got insurance, you don't. There's no insurance which means that we need to let go of fear about the future. All the things that you falsely believe are destined to come to pass that are negative in the future are sitting in your field as objects that need to be reintegrated and disintegrated. Because the future is infinite possibilities and it is never set. So we're sweeping up from the left side of your third eye back into the core, and we're going to seal it with a statement. I'm excited for the future. I don't worry about the future. What will be, will be, and this too shall pass and nothing eternal can pass. True self is the eternal. Fiction though, it's gonna pass. <laughs> now we're gonna link the third eye in our throat. So we're gonna say 
I can express my imagination. I love to express my imagination. Now we're going to connect the third eye with the sacral because just like the root and the throat, these two are highly connected. What we imagine in our mind's eye is expressed in the world by us utilizing the energy of our sacral chakra, the creative force. So that also means something very important that the purity of our sexual energy determines the purity of what we imagine and our connection. It literally an impure sexual center as in off balance, uh, distorted, unhealed, unwhole, fractured, your sexuality in that form will lead to a fracturing or even a distorting, a filtering of your imagination. Your imagination is your connection to the voice of the creator of spirit of your higher self. So we're gonna purify and connect these two together with the tones and we're going to say to ourselves, I have the energy and power to create what I imagine. I can build bodies for my thoughts. Now we're going up to the crown, also one that's highly troubled right now. Corona actually means crown in Greek. <laughs> this is your sovereignty, it's your connection to time. Heather's got her crown on right now. I got my, my crown on, crown on. Get it, crown chakra on. So this area doesn't, I haven't been able to distinguish difference between the right and the left. So we're just gonna activate both together because it's kind of above the, the duality of the physical body just slightly. What we are gonna do with this is get rid of the belief that there's not enough time for things. When you're in the flow of synchronicity, you're always on time. You're never too early, you're never too late. When you're trapped in time, you're always needing motivation, motivation. You have to fuel your existence with beliefs. Like, I got to go to this job to survive. And that's what motivates you to do something you don't like. When we activate our crowns and fully are in our sovereignty. We need no motivation because the flow of the universe is the wind in our sails. And that divine synchronicity is what brings us together as we need to be brought together, it puts us where we are always meant to be. And what that means is that we are a property of nature. We are an expression of nature. So let's say this. My time is free and nature is me. Now we're gonna connect that to the third eye. And we're gonna to say to ourselves, my imagination connects me to source. Now we're going to connect the solar plexus with the crown because like the last two, they're connected. Your sovereignty and your will makes sense, right? And now we say to ourselves, 
I have the will to protect my sovereignty, to say no to that which does not serve me. I have the vision to respect my place in nature. Hmm. We're almost there, guys. Thanks for letting me go through all of this. I had no idea exactly how long it would be. But doesn't it feel amazing? It's so relaxing. Now I'm going to play the tone of the next octave up of C, which is 512. This is going to be intended to connect you to your halo chakra, the eighth chakra. It's a cosmic chakra. It is your own because it's your higher self. It's a higher dimensional body. It's the root of a higher dimensional body, actually, your spiritual self. The soul that is only a fraction of which can be stuffed into the body that you're in right now. This is the root of that. And because it's the spiritual root for you, that means that it's your protection. It's the it's the envelope of of uh, is the being that you are cell that you're a cell in. <laughs> so just know that uh, we're going to be connecting to that because. We don't have a right or left for this chakra, but it, it does represent your divine protection um, from the forces of evil. Because if you are connected all the way up to this, this halo chakra, just you're, you're fractally ensuring through your own will that on a higher level, your higher spiritual body is also aligned in this way and part of divine synchronicity. And you can start to know it. You can start to communicate with this part of yourself. That's the still small voice. So all you have to do to activate your halo chakra and your divine protection and your connection to the larger body that is your higher self is remember you have it. It's that easy. So anytime you ever feel threatened, activate your halo chakra. Just remember you've got one. It's amazing. It's the easiest thing. Remembering, putting your members back together. <laughs> Let's see if I can get a louder strike for this. We definitely will when we connect it to the root because we're going to connect the C and the C next. We say to ourselves, I am spiritually protected. All right, now we're going to connect this halo chakra, the root of our higher spiritual body, to the root of our current physical body, root to root. C, C. C is the third letter, which means that C, C is 33. 33 is the temperature at which ice becomes a liquid. You quit being frozen and you become fluid. You flow again. And that's what this last affirmation will be to initiate a flow state from here on out that will last as long as you choose to allow it. By the way, the stream is one hour and 33 minutes right now. <laughs> Didn't plan that. And now it's 1 33, 33 seconds right there, right when I struck the tone. This is what I'm talking about with synchronicity. I don't have to plan it. It's just what it is. <laughs> and guys, we are toned up. We're tuned up. We're good to go. I better let Heather talk. I bet she's got some experiences. Mm. I have and am experiencing deep gratitude. Deep gratitude chance for that gift and deep gratitude for everyone who is co-creating this powerful resonant field, um, both in our circle and in the circles that have been in our gathering um, across the globe in celebration and honor of, of the day out of time and the manifestation of the new earth within each and every one of us. So, and you're receiving all this awesome feedback 
from that experience, Chance. Um, thank you so much. I, uh, it's so awesome. I just want to honestly like go lay down and <laughs> Continue. I've never even done that before remotely as the first time I even did that remotely, but I knew it's possible. So I just went with it. I I had a feeling that was true. I definitely am feeling that this was, is a part of your initiatory portal that you're moving through with your galactic birthday. Um, and I dare say this is the first of many, 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 many um, times that you are, um, holding this sacred healing space. So thank you so much. I feel really inspired um, to invite all of us to be ever so mindful of how we um, take care of ourselves all the time. That's something to be mindful about and especially in what we just received. Um, drink lots of water and allow yourself to rest yeah let me just say this experience is similar to getting a massage your body can potentially do some detoxifying activity from these tones um another interesting thing about the tones is they cause nitrous oxide release in the body in the muscles which is why it makes you feel relaxed but yeah i, I had to interrupt there uh, treat this like you would a massage take it a little easy on yourself for the next day at least if not two be really mindful of um any like try, basically try to avoid doing stuff that uh, is pleasure seeking if you can, just to see if there's a, a more ease in breaking any patterns of uh, ad ad addictive behaviors that are not useful or not serving anymore. That's one thing you can really do. And also uh, show up for recognizing the synchronicity that is always present and see if you notice more of it, see if you feel more aligned. And uh, just like the halo chakra, recognizing that you're aligned and knowing it is what keeps you anchored to that timeline. Beautiful, awesome, awesome. Well, dear, dear friends, I feel like we get to move into a um, conscious completion of our time together um, this evening. And I wanna be sure, Chance, and um, share how people can stay connected with you and tune in and tap into your podcast. So will you share that that link and how people oh, yeah. can stay connected? Um, I can't use the Facebook chat right now because uh, I'm out of town and Facebook kicked me off because they think I'm stealing my own account, I guess. I don't know, even though I've signed in from this computer before. So I can't drop this in the chat, but if you don't mind typing I'll it in, it. it's just mm -hmm. interversepodcast.com. And from the homepage, you can see all the ways to tune into this show and subscribe. It's on Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, um, more platforms than our list on the website because there's a lot of new video platforms coming up all the time. And YouTube is a heavily censored medium and I'm moving away from that as I can. Uh, but YouTube's great because I do video versions of episodes lately. If you want to uh, donate to the show, you can also go to patreon.com slash interverse, which is where you get this two hour version of my show for only five bucks a month. I like to tell people it's like, if you if you would tip someone who's serving you food and like for one meal, you might tip them five dollars, depending on how expensive restaurants are where you live. Think about what you get for five dollars with me, because I'm working for you every week, week in and out to give you a, a two hour show experience, which equates to me doing six to ten hours of work, not to mention the research that may have gone into that topic. So uh, for five dollars, you're getting not just the meal that you're tipping me for, but also four or five other meals. <laughs> of other shows in that month and uh, the the tribe of subscribers is really amazing there's other ways you can connect if you go to my website there's also a link to the discord server discord is a chat platform we have a private server there and don't be off put by the word discord because although it means a lack of agreement or lack of accord it also means a disentanglement and um, <laughs> cutting bonds cutting bondage so uh, words are all double meaning and we need to recognize that that I think moving forward and um, I like to teach that and on my show there's just so many amazing guests and topics uh, I I learned so much from doing it I hope that you guys can come learn a little bit from my path as well and thank you all for tuning in and going through the Bible tuning session for me tuning in <laughs> uh, yeah so good uh, that was a lot of fun for me and 
like you said, it's the initiatory portal for something I'm going to be doing a lot more. And to me, it just blew my mind that on the 33 tone, it was 133.33. That's just outrageous in the best possible way. And <laughs> verifiable, <laughs> verifiable synchronicity right there, guys. So uh, watch out for them in your own life. They're bound to be flowing at all times, especially right now in the heightened energies that we're experiencing through the the fury of the sun in, in Leo season, one of my yes. most powerful times of my year as a Leo rising. Leo was on the ascendant when I was born, and I kind of come across with the Leo energy, even though my sun sign is Aries. But yeah, yeah. enough about me. I, I got some people to go hang out with yeah. and enjoy yeah. uh, my evening. And yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. Thank Heather, you. You're, you're a jam, Heather. I, I, <laughs> This is a great galactic birthday present because without you, this conversation wouldn't have happened. I wouldn't have been able to express all the realizations I came to about my code spell today. And I wouldn't have been able to initiate my very first uh, so-called long distance, but really there is no distance between us. We're all connected, biofield tuning, where we entered into a harmonic uh, expression of our biorhythm together. And that's just... That's just the beginning, guys. We're just getting started. This is a whole new age that we're entering. It's a paradigm shift, and you get to decide what that looks like. Are you going to be your next paradigm created by forces outside of you that make you feel trapped? Or are you going to be building the next paradigm yourself, regardless of what external forces are trying to dictate to you? It's up to us. And I love I you all. <laughs> yes. Love you all. Happy day out of time. Happy New Year whole a whole new realm that we're stepping into through the lion's gate leo medicine medicine of the blue lunar storm year so let us be the eye of the storm and clear the pathway of what no longer serves and align with the truth of who we are as sovereign beings aho in the cash i am another yourself happy galactic birthday chance Thank you all so much. Have a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful rest of your evening and new year. Bye-bye. Much love, guys.